rest of the inventory that is in essence being expensed. So businesses that sell products, figure your gross profits by first figuring your net receipts, figure net receipts line three on schedule C by subtracting any returns and allowances line two from gross receipts line one. So in other words, we're looking at the revenue side of things. When we think about the revenue side, we could have these returns and allowances, which we talked a little bit about in prior presentations, meaning if someone returns the inventory, that kind of negates the sale that took place. Do, what are you gonna do in that case? Are you gonna reduce the inventory line item itself, the revenue, the sales line? Not usually because we don't like decreasing the sales line. Instead, we create another account, not an expense account, but it acts like an expense account in that it's gonna be up in the revenue kind of section. You might call it a contra revenue account, which is gonna be a decrease to the sales line to get to basically the net sales line as opposed to net income line, right? So returns and allowances include cash or credit refunds you make to customers, rebates or other allowances off the actual sales price. So next, subtract the cost of goods sold, which we talked about in a prior presentation. Line four from net receipts, line three, the result is gross profit. That's just the subtotal on the way down the way because the cost to get sold is such an important number. We want to have its own little subtotal category up top. Businesses that sell services. You do not have to figure the cost of goods sold if the sale of merchandise is not an income producing factor for your business. So if you're a service business, you got no cost of goods sold. So the gross profit calculation isn't really a thing so much in that case. Uh, because you're not dealing with inventory and therefore not cost of goods sold and therefore gross profit isn't a thing. Your gross profit is the same as your net receipts, gross uh, receipts minus any refunds, rebuts, baits, or uh, other allowances. Most professions and businesses that sell services rather than products can figure gross process profit directly from net receipts in this way. In other words, you're just going to carry down your sales number to the gross profit as if because there's nothing to subtract from it because there's no cost of goods sold. Illustration. So this illustration of gross profit section of the income statement of a retail business shows how gross profit is figured. So you got the income statement for a year ended December 31st, 2022. You got the gross receipts. Again, they're not really gross. That's just your revenue account. Don't be grossed out by it or anything. 400000 and then you're going to subtract out the returns and allowances. People returned the merchandise. It negates the gross receipts or the revenue. Should you just decrease the revenue by that 14,940? No. Should we expense it? No, we're going to put it up top as a contra revenue account, acting kind of like an expense account, but we want to break it out up top in the contra revenue. That gives us our net receipts. Is net receipts the same as net income? No, net income is after all the expenses and whatnot. This is net receipts, our net sales line up top. That comes out to the 385.60 minus the cost of goods sold, the cost of the inventory, the expense of us consuming the inventory to generate the revenue. In this case of 288140, that gives us our gross profit of the 96,920. So the gross profit, is that the same as net income? No, it's just a pit stop on the way. It's only subtracting out one of the expenses, the big one, the cost of goods sold. All the other expenses need to be subtracted out from it before we get to the bottom line of the income statement or the Schedule C, in essence, net income. So this is going to be the cost of goods sold calculation. We had to calculate the cost of goods sold to get to this number for the cost of goods sold here, the 288140 cost of goods sold. That's going to be I think on part three of the Schedule C, where we kind of summarize this cost of goods sold calculation. So let's take a look at that. That's where we have the beginning inventory. Inventory should be the same as the ending inventory in the prior year, plus purchases, how much we purchase for inventory, 285,900. So the beginning inventory, 37,845, plus purchases, 285,900, minus items withdrawn for personal use. So we dipped into our own stash and we decreased the inventory by 2,650. The other side going to draws because it, we, drew, we, drew, we drew it out for our personal use, which is a balance sheet account, not in the income statement. So that comes out to the 283,250. That's the 285,900 and the 2,650, 283,250. So the 37,845 plus the 283,250 
gives us the goods available for sale throughout the entire year. Did we have $321,095 in inventory at any given time in the year? No, that's how much we would have had if we hadn't sold any inventory throughout the entire year. We're imaginary number, our stockpile of inventory as if the entire year was one point in time and we didn't sell any of it. Minus the ending inventory, the stuff that we didn't sell in dollars, measured in dollars, 32,955, gives us the cost of goods sold, the 288,140, which we could see on the income statement, helping us to calculate the gross profit. There's the 288,140. Okay, so items to check. Item one, check the weather forecast. Consider the following items before figuring your gross profit. Gross receipts. At the end of each business day, make sure your, your records balance with your actual cash and credit receipts for the day. You may find it helpful to use cash registers to keep track of receipts. You should also use a proper invoicing system and keep a separate bank account for your business. So depending on the type of business that you have, if you sell inventory in a store or something like that, having an accounting system like a cash register type of system, checking your receipts to uh, to your physical cash and your, and your and the revenue that you've collected, those internal controls are useful from a bookkeeping standpoint. Sales tax collected. Check to make sure your records show the correct sales tax collection. This is getting more into bookkeeping kind of situations. We talked a little bit about sales tax in the past. If you sell inventory, it's likely in the United States that the state and local government may force you to charge sales tax which is in essence supposed to be a tax on the purchase person purchasing the customer, not on you, the business owner, but you are the collection agent and therefore you have to increase the price of your sale by whatever the sales tax is and collect that, pay that to the government. How are you going to record that? Well, for example, if you sold something for $10 and you had to charge $2 of sales tax, then you should basically record revenue of $10 and the $2 should be a liability that you have collected and then you're going to pay it to the government reducing the liability and reducing the cash account when you pay it to the government instead of recording $12 as revenue including the sales tax and then having an expense of $2. You can see the net income would be the same either way. You might say what's the difference uh, because because the, 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 the theory is that it's not really your income, you're just the tax collector. So you shouldn't have income and expense. It should just be an off income statement item. Accounting software is quite useful to help you to kind of account for that stuff. This question does come up if you deal with taxes with people that have to deal with sales tax because when they pay the sales tax, they're like, hey, I need a sales tax expense. But if they didn't include the sales tax in revenue, which they shouldn't have, then then it wouldn't make sense to have the sales tax expense and if they did include the sales tax in revenue you would think that you would need to reduce the revenue to what your actual revenue was because sales tax shouldn't be part of revenue technically okay so if you collect state and local sales taxes imposed on you as the seller of goods or services from the buyer you must include the amount collected uh, in gross receipt uh, if you are required to collect state and local taxes imposed on the buyer and return them over to state or local government, you generally do not include these amounts in income. One more time, if you collect state and local sales tax imposed on you as the seller of goods and services from the buyer, you must include the amount uh, collected in gross receipts. If you are required to collect state and local taxes imposed on the buyer, and turn them over to state or local governments, you generally do not include these amounts in income. Inventory at beginning of year. Compare this figure with last year's ending inventory. The two amounts should usually be the same. So when you're checking your income statement to see if there's any kind of red flags or things that should be jumping out at you, one thing that should be jumping out at you that you should be double checking is that the beginning inventory you have matches the ending inventory in the prior year. If it does not, you would need to explain why, or it looks like a red flag, something that gov 